Last time on Pixel History, Spanish terror in the streets of Antwerp. The city hall, jeweled of Antwerp, in flames. Not in my backyard, said Prince William of Orange. The Dutch provinces unite against the Spanish butcher, rapist of Antwerp. Espera un momentito. Excuse you, I'm having a moment here. Soy yo, Julian Juderías. Me gustaría hablarte de la leyenda negra. Hmm, perhaps there is more to the story than just that. Love the accent, by the way. Bueno, por favor, proceda. In the wake of the Spanish fury in Antwerp, the burning city hall would become a permanent symbol for Spanish tyranny in the Netherlands. It quickly became immortalized on paintings and illustrations alike until well into the 17th century. In a society in which large numbers of people could not read or write, the imagination and propagandistic value of such prints should not be underestimated. And that is exactly what these paintings helped foster, an antagonistic sentiment towards the brutality of the Spanish oppressor. This did not stop with paintings. An important recurring theme in Dutch pamphlets about Spain was the national character of the Spaniards. In a Dutch pamphlet from 1598, entitled Art and the Eigenschappen van Signor van Spanien, the Spanish were portrayed as stingy, unfaithful, obscure, mean, tyrannical, cunning, ruthless, and arrogant. The writer explained that the main cause of this behavior was the Spanish's attachment to the Pope and the Inquisition, which caused them to be cruel and unpredictable in nature. During the Eighty Years' War, Dutch sentiments against the Spanish were, understandably, quite negative. Such propaganda was certainly nothing new in times of war, even by this time, but it was actually an early form of what would later become known as the Black Legend. The term Black Legend was properly coined and defined by the Spaniard Julian Huderias. Ese soy yo. In his book La Legendra Negra from 1914, he described it as the environment created by the fantastical stories about our homeland that have seen the light of publicity in all countries, the grotesque descriptions that have been made of the character of Spaniards as individuals and collectively, the denial or at least the systematic ignorance of all that is favorable and beautiful in the various manifestations of culture and art, the accusations that in every era have been flung at Spain. Not only in the Netherlands, but also elsewhere in Europe, the black legend was initially conceived as a response to the Spanish conquests in America. This gave Spaniards a reputation of greedy people who wanted to establish a world domination and of cruel oppressors of innocent natives in the New World. One publication in particular nurtured that reputation. Las Casas' Previsima Relación de la Destrucción de las Indias. Published in 1552, it was subsequently spread throughout Europe and translated in many various languages since 1578. Las Casas had intended it as a plea for a more humane treatment of the natives in the American colonies. To this end, he addressed the then Crown Prince Philip II and enumerated all imaginable abominations that the Spaniards had been guilty of, according to him. Though later argued to have been exaggerated in some places, his work served as an ideal form of anti-Spanish propaganda to the many rivals and enemies of Spain. Aside from the Dutch, the English, French and Germans had their own reasons for spreading harmful rumors about the Spanish. Their collective efforts pushed forward a narrative in which the Spaniards were depicted as villains, denouncing them for being cruel and immoral people, and that, as they established colonies around the New World, they also enslaved and robbed the land's indigenous people. The means and motives of such propaganda varied from place to place. To the English, for example, setting up a narrative that made the Spaniards turn out to be the villainous bad guys was a convenient justification for expanding their own colonies into Spanish territories. It also played a great role in the tensions between the incredibly Catholic Spain and the rebellious Protestant North. All in all, themes of the Black Legend were the treatment of the natives by the Spanish conquistadors, the Spanish Inquisition, the treatment of Protestants in the Spanish Empire, anti-Semitism, and the curious lifestyles of Spanish kings. The legend even persists to this very day, 
as there are still people living in Belgium and the Netherlands today who believe that dark-haired and dark-eyed people are descended from the Spanish soldiers who raped the many Dutch and Belgian women from 1568 to 1648. Researchers debunked this myth, by the way. Ja, 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 ja. Qué estupidez. Now, the big question is, is there any truth to these widespread accusations? Critics of the black legend point out that the negative images about Spain are primarily prominent in periods and places in which the Spaniards were the enemies. In the 16th and 17th century in England and the Netherlands, but also in the United States in the 19th century during the Mexican-American War. So if nothing else, it could just be an incredible amount of bad press against a particularly envied empire. Especially considering some such nations themselves may very well have been guilty of similar atrocities and colonialism that they accused the Spaniards of. On the other hand, proponents of the term point out that Spain has nonetheless committed many atrocities and crimes in the past, and accuse historians who challenge the theory of the black legend of creating a white legend instead. For example, they point to the contemporary difference between the former English and the former Spanish colonies. Where the United States and Canada are among the richest countries in the world, Latin America has been struggling for 200 years with an ailing economy and a lack of functioning political institutions. According to them, this was due to the Spanish political legacy. All in all, the foreign imposed idea that your nation consists of nothing but murderous bastards is a bit of a harsh standard to place upon yourself as a nation. Puderias believes that the Spaniards themselves eventually came to believe in the dark image of religious intolerance, backwardness, fanaticism and moral decline because of all this negative foreign press. Spain would be a country where the Enlightenment and modernity had never made their appearance. This led to a reaction from conservative Spain that praised the Spanish national character and put the Inquisition's actions into perspective and pointed to the glory of the Spanish Golden Age, in which Spain was at the top of its power as a world empire and had shown itself to be a worthy defender of the Catholic faith. Rather than being cruel murderers, they instead pointed towards the country's rich cultural heritage and the role they played in civilizing and Christianizing the indigenous people of the New World. Convinced that Spain was a thoroughly Christian nation, designed by the Catholic kings in the 16th century, they created the white or pink legend in response to the black legend. What's important to keep in mind though is that the opposition to the black legend arose at a time when nationalism was a sentiment that was on the rise all throughout Europe, including Spain. Okay. It's been described as a marked characteristic of the nationalist Spanish historiography during the regime of Francisco Franco which sought to associate itself with the imperial past in a positive light. No quise decir eso en absoluto. This brings with it the risk of aggrandizing the black pages in their history. Abusadores de la historia. So representations of both extremes should probably be taken with a pinch of salt. Was the hatred of the English and the Dutch towards the Spanish justified? Well, yes. Just as the Scottish hated the English, the Polish hated the Germans, and the Balkan people hate just about everyone equally. In the end, the matter is never quite so black and white, pun entirely intended. Spain was by no means isolated enough to be considered a different people from the rest of Europe altogether. People all around the globe are capable of extreme cruelties and acts of selfishness when pushed to the extreme. The Spanish, at the height of their power surrounded by rivals on the world stage, had to do whatever they could to remain on top. Because they didn't beat the competition in the end, though, they never had the authority to erase the more exaggerated black pages of their history. And so the depictions of the burning city hall of Antwerp stuck, engraved in the collective consciousness of Spain's enemies, and resulting in convenient comparisons to the old black legend for international football matches even to this very day. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, do feel free to leave a comment and like and subscribe if you wish to help the channel grow. Any support is always very appreciated. See you next time.